right, what up guys? Welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to do color correction with Magic Bullet Looks. Um, Magic Bullet Looks is a plugin, so you're gonna have to download that. If you're a student, you can go to the Red Giant website and actually reach out to them, and they'll give you the Magic Bullet suite for free, which is really, really nice, or the Red Giant suite for free, and you know, that has Magic Bullet Looks in it and everything, so you can get all your plugins for free just like that. But once you get that installed, go ahead, look up Magic Bullet Looks, drag that onto your clip, and we can get started. So an important thing to note about color correction is that there's not like a one size fits all uh, approach to it. You know, it's gonna vary from footage to footage. However you wanna do it, it's gonna be different than how someone else wants to do it, you know? And I see a lot of tutorials out there and they're like, oh, just copy me, just do what I do. No, that's, that's not how it fucking works. So the goal of this tutorial is just to give you a broad idea of what you can do to do certain things um, and just give you a good idea of how to use uh, Magic Bullet Looks to do color correction. Um, first thing I usually like to do is I'll click on this subject panel right here, open up tools, bring out my curves. Now all you gotta know is that if you drag this curve up, it's gonna bring out your contrast, that's gonna make your shit brighter. You drag it down like this, that's like your shadows, you know that's gonna make it a bit darker. Now a lot of people like to just keep it like that, if they're gonna put curves on, they're gonna make a shape like that, you know, you've probably seen that shape before, your fucking grandma's probably seen that shape before. You know, anytime you're editing the look of something, in a computer program, you're going to be using curves and it's going to be looking like that. Um, so that's a pretty common way to do it. Um, I see some people, they do some weirdo shit like this. They like bring that up. Like, nah, I don't, I don't really like that. Um, but you can keep it like that. If it's a really dark scene like this right here, it's a mildly dark scene. So I don't bring this hella far down like that. You know, I'll just keep it kind of like that. Um, but yeah, that's what I usually like to start with curves in my subject panel. And then we're going to stick in the subject panel. I'm going to open up tools again. And this, I'm gonna go warm slash cool. Now what this does, this allows you to kind of put just a general color over your entire um, video, if that makes sense. So here, I'll show you what I mean. So if you drag this over up here, you notice everything gets real orange, right? Drag it up this way, now everything's getting green. Drag it into the blue, yeah, you, you figure out how that works. Um, but what I like to do is that I'll usually just drag it a little bit down like that. Nothing dramatic at first. Um, and we can go back and edit that later um, once we do some more stuff. But I'll usually keep it just like that because I kind of like that look. It kind of makes characters or people look more tan. If you have footage and the person's skin is like really white, maybe it's too wash washed out or overexposed. Can make them look more tan that way if you're editing an amv like this you can make your character look more tan by putting that on you know it kind of just adds some color you know i kind of fuck with that look um next thing we're going to want to do is i like to use a lut and i'll put a lut on my subject tab um you can also use lut in post um this just comes down to personal preference and you can kind of experiment with it um but i like to do lut on my subject tab on this shit want to move all right cool and basically these are just basically presets that you can use to give your footage a certain look personally i really like fall is here i think it's kind of just like a cool look see that kind of adds some oranges um and then you can adjust the strength like sometimes i'll just like crank it down to 80 or something you know it doesn't really matter you can kind of just play around with these looks find something that you nice you like tranquility this is a really nice one as well and then also down here vibrance thing this looks really really fucking cool in my opinion so for this video i'm just going to stick with this and crank it down to something like 70. see that now post i'm going to jump over to post for a minute and we're going to go ahead mojo 2 mojo 2 this is like basically what like red giant is known for you know like this is their shit um, so if you're, if you're fucking with Magic Bullet, you're fucking with Mojo 2. So basically you're going to take Mojo 2, slap it down there in your post, and immediately you're going to see some big differences, right? And it's a, it's a little dramatic at first, but basically what this allows you to do is 
mess with your color a lot. Let's say you want to make your footage look faded. If you're kind of going for like a dark look in your AMV or something, you're going to go to like fade 25, you know? You see that? It adds kind of like a fade effect to it. Again, this is a lot like a LUT where you can kind of just like mess around, see what you like or not. And all you usually do is I just, I go for a very subtle look with my mojo. I'll go maybe 20%. And then I'll crank this down to 10, crank this down to 10, my fade, I like to have a little bit of fade, and then I'll just kind of mess with the strength. Usually I'll bring it down to about like 80 or something like that, so. And yeah, that's what Mojo does, like, there's not really like one good way to describe what Mojo is, it just adds a certain look, you know, that it's just kind of like something like uh red giants known for like that that's the thing in magic bullets you know um another thing we're gonna do we're gonna come over here we're gonna go to lens chromatic aberration this popular in a lot of amvs um it's kind of like the little 3d glasses effect so i'll just show you really quick if you see that it kind of adds like that look this is a fun look to use in amvs but also if you're trying to do like a uh, like a vintage like 90s style look chromatic aberration is great because a lot of um like 90s styles film they actually kind of have that effect already in them uh it's kind of hard to explain but that's kind of just how film looked when things were shot on film back then it kind of had that look so you can do that if you're trying to go for a vintage look um but for me, if I'm doing an AMV, I'll usually set this value to 1, this value to 0.5, oh, shit. 0.5, and then my blue and yellows to negative 0.5. And we can zoom in right there, and now you can kind of see the difference. It's a cool little look. And then another thing we can do with lens is that we can drag out edge softness. So edge softness, you can use it to almost focus in on a certain subject, which is what I'm gonna do in this demonstration. But also, if you're trying to add like some motion blur almost, like if you got a fast clip, but maybe you shot it in a high frame rate and you don't wanna lower that frame rate in post, you can drag your aspect and radius kind of out like that and add some at edge softness to the side. If you're going for almost like a dreamlike look, you can do some of that. But what I like to do is for this demonstration, I want to basically focus in on this character right here and kind of get rid of all the leaves and stuff around her. So I'm just going to drag it just like that, change the aspect, kind of just fit her body a bit more. And then now you can see when it's toggled, but now I have that effect applied. All of this stuff around her is kind of out of like um, out of focus. You see, brings it in focus without. It almost just looks like the camera's focusing in on her. So that's a really cool effect. And out of all the tutorials, I've never seen people use it the way I use it. I'm not saying like I invented that shit, you know, but that's a really really fun use for the edge softness um, tool. Um, next thing we're gonna do um, the two strip process. This is a really, really popular look in a lot of anime music videos. I'm going to toggle all of our other effects, turn them all off, except for curves. And basically, this two-strip process, it brings out all of the greens and the reds in your footage. And if this is the kind of look you're going for, you can pretty much just throw curves and a two-strip process on it and call it a day. Um, some people don't like this look because it washes out all the colors except for the greens and the reds but then some people at the same time they like the kind of two-tone look the two color look um so i felt like it would almost be a sin not to show you guys the two strip process because i've used it in a quite quite a few amvs some popular amvs that i've made as well and people really like that look so if you ever wanted to know how to do that there you go Besides that, I'm going to turn everything else back on. Now, another really important effect I'm going to show you how to do, or not effect, but just tool to use, is HSL colors right here. 
what you do drag it down here now basically if you're trying i'm going to take all of our other effects off real quick just so i can show you this a bit better but let's say i don't like how much blue is in this scene right i kind of want to get rid of those all these blue make that blue not so overpowering i'm going to take my blue selector here and i'm going to drag it inward see that drag it inwards like that let me show you what it looks like before that's before that's after it kind of grays that blue out now let's say i want to really make her jacket red i want to bring those reds out we're going to do the same thing with the red but we're going to do the opposite of that drag it this way drag it up you know what i mean so now that red is a lot more vibrant and those blues not so much and i'm going to keep this for that for this video since i want it to really be focused in on her um that's the look i'm going for so there you go now you see how that looks all right next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go over here to mojo and i'm going to crank this down to like 50 because i feel like it's just a bit too bright right now now i'm going to go over to our warm and cool i'll crank it back since i already brought a lot of the reds out we don't need it to be so orange so i'll kind of just crank it back there but since i'm in my subject panel I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna grab pop. Pop kind of like almost brings out your whites in a way. I don't really know how to describe it, but I'll show you the look. Usually I'm rocking about 30%. And you see that? I'm not sure if you can see the difference too well, but here's before I put pop 30% on. And here's afterwards. It's almost like curves in a way, you know, but like very subtly. And it's a, it's a fun look to use. I, I'd recommend using pop unless you have a really bright scene. If your scene's super fucking bright, then pop's just gonna look goofy and you don't wanna do that. But that I usually use pop in most of my AMVs. Next, I'm gonna go over to the map panel. Haven't been showing you guys really uh, any tools in that yet. Hella popular one is diffusion. This is kind of like uh, like almost like a glowing look. So if I crank my size up or excuse me, if I bring the size down, kind of like that, you see that? It kind of messes with like that glowing look. You can mess with how much the glow actually, um, like how much glow there actually is. It's kind of hard to tell on this clip, but if you see me messing with the size, you see the glowing kind of change. Um, it's not very noticeable on this clip, so I'm not gonna use it. But if you wanna make something kind of glow like that, you can use diffusion or spot diffusion. And yes, yeah, so now you know how to use that tool. All right, final effect I want to show you guys, or excuse me, final tool I want to show you guys is the renoiser. It's in the camera panel. Go over to tools, renoiser. This is going to basically add film grain um, to your footage. In past versions of, um, of Magic Bullet looks, I think it was just called film grain. So if you updated your version or something like that and you're trying to find where the film grain that is at, it's called Renoiser now, but let me just show you. Here's with Renoiser on. Now I'm gonna take it off. If you're going for like a vintage style look in um, some live action video, that's what you're gonna want to do for sure. You're gonna want to use Renoiser, um, or if you're kind of going for like a dark, gritty kind of like anime music video, Renoiser works great as well. Um, clearly, that doesn't really fit with uh, this this clip right here. You feel me? So I'm just gonna take that off. But that's Renoiser for you. And um, besides that, I basically covered all the most important, um, in my opinion, tools you need to know when you're starting out working with Magic Bullet looks. Um, of course, there is so much more to this. I just scratched the surface. But like I said, in my opinion, these are the most important things you need to know when you're getting into color correction. Um, but other than that, yeah, that's basically it. So let's go and let's see what it looks like before we added our color correction. So there it is. And then there is the result afterwards. And I really like that look. And damn, that only took us like not even 10 minutes, you know? So if you take a long time and really work on your color correction and learn how to use Magic Bullet looks well, you're gonna get that shit nailed. And it's gonna look really, really good. Um, but other than that, we're done with the tutorial. 
Um, I want to let you guys know that I'm offering one-on-one -on -one classes via Discord and Zoom if you need more help with editing. Um, I've already had quite a few people reach out to me and say that they need more help and that they're stuck on something. So if you need help and you want a class from me, just reach out to me in the comments section. I'll drop the Discord link down there. And uh, yeah, just reach out to me on Discord and I can help you guys uh, learn whatever you need help with. Um, yeah. So besides that, um, have a good day and peace out.